Hello, my friends. I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've used this setup because in the summer it's really inconvenient because this room is very loud due to the air conditioner, but I don't have to have it on right now because it's only 80 <laughs> in my house right now. Um, <clears throat> speaking of hot weather, I'm here today with some summer horror recommendations and then also a couple of summer horror books that I'd like to try to get to this season. I really like doing summer horror. I feel like when it's a really good summer horror book, you can feel the atmosphere so well. You can feel that hot, sticky, nasty heat. And um, it's hot here for most of the year. So I like to torture myself by reading more hot things in the summer. Anyways, probably one of my favorite subgenres of horror. Uh, I feel like a good amount of summer horror books also kind of delve into survival things, which I really love. Okay, that's it. That's all I have to say about it. And now I'll get to the recommendations. The first one I'd like to talk to you about is Kill River by Cameron Rubik. I read this for the Bloody Beach read along last year and I'm so glad I picked it up. It ended up being such a fun read. This one really reads like an 80s slasher flick. It is gory and fun and you don't know who the killer is. Uh, so this is about a group of teenagers. They are at summer camp together. Something happens, kind of like a quarrel with the camp counselors and they decide that camp is not for them. Uh, so they take a raft and they try to get across, I think it's like a lake or a river maybe, maybe a lake and then they're on a river because I feel like there's moving water at some point, but they end up getting lost and eventually they come across this like tunnel on the water and it brings them to this water park that's abandoned and when I say abandoned you think of like a building that's in disarray it hasn't been upkept um it's dirty and broken and there's spiders but that's definitely not the case for this park. It seems like it's totally just a normal water park that none of them have heard of and has no people in it except for them. So, you know, they decide since they're there, maybe they could go down a slide or two and um, it doesn't go quite as they planned. There is a killer, a masked killer. Like I said, this read a lot like an 80s slasher flick. It was a lot of fun to read. Um, at some points it felt maybe a little bit long, but I wouldn't let that deter you because I think overall it was a really good book. All right, and you know, I couldn't have any video like this without talking about The Runes by Scott Smith. This is one of my very favorite books of all time, and this fits in perfectly uh, as a summer horror read. This is about a group of friends who are vacationing down in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And um, on their vacation, they meet a couple other foreigners. One group is like Greek, and there's also um, a guy from Germany that they meet. And they're getting close to the end of their vacation. And um, the man that they meet from Germany says that he might have something fun for them to do but also they kind of be helping him out because his brother, who he was on this trip with, his brother ended up meeting somebody who was on an expedition team who was um, kind of exploring this old ruin. Uh, but he hasn't heard from his brother, but he does have a map to where this ruin is. So he's like, you'll come with me, we can find my brother together, and also you'll get to see this cool ruin. And they decide to do that. Um, but when they get there, they aren't able to leave the ruin. And um, things get really messy. And this is just such a well-written, very like viscerally creepy book. Um, it has great body horror. Definitely maybe not something for someone who's very squeamish because it 
gets creepy. Um, one of my very favorite books, like I said, and one that I definitely, like, even if I talk about this every single time I do a video like this, I, like, it's worth it if, like, one person decides to pick it up because it's such a great book. The next book I'd like to recommend is Creature by Hunter Shea. This is another book I read last summer, um, and this is about a couple, and the wife has some autoimmune issues. She has, I believe, um, lupus and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So she is not able to get up and move around. She's almost basically bedridden because she's in so much pain when she moves and um, her joints have like hypermobility. So they become very easily dislocated and stuff like that. So it's just better for her if she stays put. But like that is not fun and she's taking a lot of medication. Uh, she decides at the very beginning of this book to do kind of like a an, an more experimental type of um, way to manage this and it takes a huge toll on her well-being and also like her husband's sanity because on the other end here's this man who is working a really menial job, a job that he hates, but I mean, he has good health insurance um, and he is basically her caretaker and he has to, you know, watch her go through all this pain. So it's not easy for either of these people. The husband, he rents a summer cabin and he's like, we're just gonna go there. We're going to relax. We're not gonna think about fucking anything. We're just gonna have a nice peaceful summer. So they go to this cabin in the woods. It's pretty secluded, but it is on like a small lake and there are people around, other cabins around the lake, but um, not any like super close neighbors. You know what I mean? While they're at this cabin, weird things start to happen in the woods and it kind of escalates and builds up and um, it gets pretty spooky. So this was a really, good book. Um, I almost gave this five stars when I read it. It has so much feeling in it. Um, it really is a good, creepy, sad summer horror book. Okay, the fourth book I'd like to recommend. This is the last recommendation for this video. This is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Um, this was his second novel. This is more of a thriller than like a straight up horror, but um, they're really adjacent, so. This is about a young woman who is an adult and she's trying to work through and process through this event that happened um, when she was a teenager at a summer camp. Um, she was bunking with a group of, there was three other girls and one night she saw them leave the cabin and then nobody else has seen them since. Um, it's this giant mystery and nobody knows what happens to them. There was no bodies, um, there was no indication, you know, there weren't even really very many suspects because they just seemed to disappear into thin air. So now as an adult, she gets invited back to the camp to work as a counselor and she decides to take the opportunity to kind of, um, like I said, work through some issues that she has and uh, maybe solve a mystery. So this is a really great thriller. Since they're out of summer camp, you get the nice summer horror aspects um, that somebody looking for summer horror would want. It really, the ending was surprising and it was a real page turner as I think most of Riley Sager's books have been. I haven't read them all, but the ones that I have have been. So this was a good one. Not one to sit on. Okay, and um, the next four books I have here are books that I'm thinking about. There's one here that I'm for sure reading. I had included another one on this list, but I read it. It was Fantastic Land by Mike Bakovin, and it just um, didn't actually take place during the summer. I didn't know that until I started to read it though. I think it took place in like November, so. I'm back to the drawing board with that. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but one for sure I'm going to read. Um, and then I have three others that I'm asking like if anyone else has read um, and would like to recommend for me. Uh, anyways, so what am I saying? The first one here that I am for sure going to read is Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco. This is a 
um, a vintage horror book. This was written in the year 1973. Um, this is a reprint by Valencourt Books. If you didn't know, they have lots of paperbacks from Hell Books that weren't part of the like series that they did. So um, if you look, this is one of them that's there. Doesn't have the same cover as like the original cover, but it's still a good cover. Uh, but this is about a family. I believe they live in New York. Yes, uh, they live in New York and they're trying to get away from the city for the summer. They find a house to rent for a couple months and it seems probably too good to be true. And we all know that if it does, it probably is. Uh, but they decide to take that offer and um, part of the deal is that this house is so cheap to rent because there is an older woman who lives there and like they're just asking like just check up on her, make her a meal, you know. Uh, but maybe she's just not a normal old lady, I think. I'll have to see. That's the um, vibe I get from this. But I'm very excited to read this. This is one I'm reading for sure this summer. The next one I have is Fat Camp by James Sabata. This is a book about um, boys at a fat camp or children. I don't know if it's just boys. Teenagers. So I think this is kind of like a coming of age slash slasher uh, about a homicidal maniac that attacks a fat camp. Um, and that's all I know about it. It seems like it's a lot of fun. So this one I'm maybe leaning more toward picking up, but um, I'd also like to know what you guys think. Um, so that's the first one that I'm not sure about. Uh, the second one, Kill River 2. This takes place after the events of the first book. There is a final girl and um, clearly the killer comes back or something like that. It says it takes place a year afterwards. So um, that's all I know about it. Because it's a sequel, I don't really want to read the synopsis. Um, and that's it. So let me know if you think I should read this one. Third and final book on this list is the... Oh, my cats. This is The Toll by Cherie Priest. And this one, I just, every time I talk about it, I feel like I just need to read you the synopsis because it sounds so cool to me. State Road 177 runs along the Suwannee River between Fargo, Georgia and the Okefenokee Swamp. Drive that route from east to west and you'll cross six bridges. Take it from west to east and you might find seven, but you better hope not. Titus and Melanie Bell are on their honeymoon and have reservations at the Okefenokee Swamp cabins for a canoeing trip. But shortly before they reach their destination, the road narrows to a rickety bridge with old stone pilings and room for only one car. Much later, Titus wakes up lying in the middle of the road, no bridge in sight. Melanie is missing. When he calls the police, they tell him there's no such bridge on State Road 177. So I don't know expressly that this takes place during the summer. Um, you'll have to let me know if you've read it. Uh, but I assumed because they're cabining and taking a canoeing trip that it probably does, right? Uh, anyways, this one definitely piqued my interest when it first came out and I've kind of let it sit. I think it just came out last year, so I haven't let it sit too long, um, but it's definitely one that I've been really interested in. It reminds me of things like the Bermuda Triangle or the Bridgewater Triangle, places where um, lots of weird unexplained happenings happen, like um, places where there are more ghost sightings and paranormal happenings and like UFO sightings, um, disappearances and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that maybe there is some sort of like weird paranormal, maybe cryptid. I don't know. I'm, I'm very excited and hopeful for this one. Um, so yeah, let me know if you think I should read this one. Out of these three, which two would you be the most likely or think that I should pick up? out of these three. Um, I'm gonna pick two of those. So that's it. That's all for this video. Um, I hope you dig these recommendations. Uh, but definitely, of course, always, before you go out and buy the book, read the synopsis, if you're a synopsis reader, because um, obviously I don't know what everyone's gonna like.
but I know what I like and I know what I think you'll like too. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Have a good summer. See you later.